On May 21st, 1982, the United Kingdom landed thousands of troops at San Carlos Water in the Falkland Islands to begin their recapture from Argentina. But only hours after arriving, British forces were under intense attack as the Argentine Air Force tried to push the troops clambering ashore back into the sea. This was the Battle of San Carlos. By mid-May 1982, Britain's proposed amphibious landing on the Falklands had been planned extensively, but like all amphibious landings, it was a fundamentally risky proposition. Under the leadership of Commodore Mike Clapp, a large number of warships, dedicated landing ships and requisitioned merchant ships would have to sail right up to the shoreline and remain there, exposed to whatever Argentina could throw at them for days on end until the five Royal Marine and Parachute Battalions have been unloaded and a secure beachhead established. Facing the British was an Argentine army under the military governor of the Falklands, Brigadier General Mario Menendez. Knowing that any British reconquest of the islands could only be successful if they captured the town of Stanley, Menendez was content to concentrate the bulk of his forces around the capital. Smaller garrisons were maintained in outlying areas, including at Goose Green and at San Carlos Settlement itself. At sea, the amphibious group of ships carrying the troops joined up with Rear Admiral Woodward's carrier task force on May 18th, and managed to achieve an undetected approach to San Carlos two days later thanks to a helpful blanket of fog. Commodore Clapp's ships made their final approach after dark, with Special Forces operations beginning to take out an Argentine observation post on Fanning Head and suppress the garrison at Goose Green to prevent their interference with the landings. With operations to secure their flanks underway, the British troops began to come ashore from landing craft at 4am, beginning with two para at the southern end of San Carlos Water. The landings were largely uncontested, with the only Argentine unit in the area being a detachment under First Lieutenant Carlos Esteban at Port San Carlos, which pulled back out of the settlement once the scale of the British landing became clear after dawn. From a position to the east, Esteban's unit fought a fierce rearguard action, downing two Gazelle Scout helicopters that strayed too close to their position before being compelled to withdraw by the leading elements of three para, which liberated Port San Carlos and raised a British flag. The reconquest of the Falklands was underway, but the battle for San Carlos was far from over. This video is brought to you by Bespoke Post, a monthly membership club delivering awesome boxes of top shelf goods from under the radar brands. Every month, Bespoke Post introduces members to cool new products from outdoor gear to home and kitchen goods, clothing and more, based on a preference quiz that picks out what each person might like. There's a wide variety of different boxes available. The Weekender box contains the Weekender bag, a hard-wearing carry-all that's an easy way to protect all of your essentials when you're on the move. Then there's the Explore box, which as well as a water-resistant Nomad backpack contains a 25-ounce water bottle, survival LED headlamp, and a toasted coconut and vanilla bean bar. Each of these boxes has around $70 worth of goods inside, but would cost you only a fraction of that value as a member of Bespoke Post. If you decide you're not interested in a particular box, that's not a problem either. Each month you'll get a preview of what comes inside your box to decide if you want to keep it, swap it, or skip the month entirely for no charge. You only pay for what you want. To get 20% off your first box, click the link in the description below and enter Historograph20 at checkout or go to bespokepost.com slash historograph20. Thanks again to Bespoke Post for sponsoring this video. Almost as soon as British troops had stepped foot on land on the morning of May 21st, Argentina's fast jets launched a determined attack on the beachhead. They were operating at maximum range from their base, with no fighter escort. Over the next few days, they would press home attacks on British ships to point-blank range, with only seconds to pick a target once it was in view, and in the face of a maelstrom of fire from British ship-based missile systems, four-and-a-half-inch naval guns, sea harriers, and land-based rapier anti-air missiles. 
The Argentine attacks on May 21st focused on British warships outside the main San Carlos anchorage, where they acted as picket ships to draw attacks away from the ships unloading troops. This stretch of water in Falkland Sound would soon become known as Bomb Alley. The frigate Argonaut was the first to be hit by two bombs from Skyhawks before HMS Antrim was struck by a bomb from a dagger. In the start of a trend that was to continue throughout the Battle for San Carlos, none of the bombs exploded, having been fused incorrectly for the altitude they were dropped from. It was a lucky escape for the British. They were not to get so lucky in the afternoon, when two pairs of Skyhawks thundered their way towards HMS Ardent. One aircraft was downed by a sea harrier, but the others got through. Two 500-pound bombs struck the frigate, with one exploding and wrecking the hangar area and the ship's SeaCat missile launcher, which had failed to engage the low-flying attackers. Ardent lost power to her gun, so was virtually defenceless when at 2pm five more Skyhawks appeared and made straight for the stricken frigate. The ship's crew had little to defend themselves with, and could not stop at least two more bombs exploding on board, cracking the hull and starting huge fires that soon threatened the torpedo and missile magazines. Commander Alan West, the ship's captain, was left with little alternative but to abandon ship. With the surviving crew taken off, Arden sank overnight, the first major surface casualty of the Battle of San Carlos. It was the end of a bruising day for both sides, Britain had lost Ardent, while both Argonaut and Antrim were out of action until unexploded ordnance they were carrying could be diffused. 33 sailors had been killed, mostly on board Ardent, and 20 injured. On the Argentine side, 10 fast jets had been shot down, fully a quarter of all launched on that day. At the end of May 21st, most British troops were now ashore, but large amounts of their supplies and heavy equipment were still on board the ships and so after a break for bad weather on May 22nd, the attacks resumed the following day. At 12.40, four Skyhawks led by Captain Pablo Caballo approached HMS Broadsword, Yarmouth and Antelope south of Fanning Island. One aircraft was driven off by a SeaCat missile and another was shot down by 20mm cannon fire, but the remaining two got through and British-made 1,000-pound bombs struck the newly arrived frigate, Antelope. Once again, they failed to explode, but while attempts to defuse the ordnance were ongoing that evening, one of the bombs detonated. The explosion claimed the life of Staff Sergeant James Prescott and started a huge fire, which caused the ship to be abandoned and eventually reached the SeaCat magazine. The dawn light of May 24th revealed an utterly broken ship which soon sank. Hours later, the Argentine Air Force came in again, this time with more focus on attacking British transports. The landing ships Sir Lancelot and Sir Galahad were hit, but with bombs that, predictably by this stage, did not explode. May 25th was Argentina's National Day, which meant that despite heavy losses of aircraft, the Argentine Air Force would summon all of its remaining strength for an all-out attack on the British ships at San Carlos it would turn out to probably be their best day of the entire air war. The British, knowing the importance of the day to their opponents, were expecting a big assault. To counteract this, Rear Admiral Woodward moved his carrier group closer to San Carlos to reduce the flight time for sea harrier patrols to and from the combat area. He also maintained a pair of air defence ships northwest of Falkland Sound, where a better radar picture could be produced away from the coast and incoming aircraft could be intercepted. This tactic started effectively. Through the morning, HMS Coventry shot down two Skyhawks with its Sea Dart missiles. But that afternoon, two pairs approached from different directions simultaneously, and it all went wrong. First, Coventry Sea Dart failed to fire, and then Broadsword Seawolf did likewise. Nearby Sea Harriers, who had been told to keep their distance to allow the ship's missiles to work as they had done that morning, could not intervene. The British ships were virtually helpless as First Lieutenant Mariano Velasco dropped three bombs into Coventry which all exploded, causing the Type 42 destroyer to sink rapidly. The bad news for the British did not stop there. Also that afternoon, two Exocet armed Super Attendars attacked the British carrier group, 
hitting the SS Atlantic conveyor and starting a huge fire, which quickly destroyed the ship and all but one of its 11 vital Chinook and Wessex helicopters. The attack on conveyor was the last major action of the battle for San Carlos. Only small-scale raids around the bay took place after this point, as the exhausted Argentine Air Force needed time to regroup. Of 62 aircraft available for combat over San Carlos on May 21st, 21 had been lost in the battle. For this, they had sunk three British warships and Atlantic conveyor, as well as hitting six other ships with bombs that did not explode. Had these detonated correctly, the damage to the landings could have been much more severe. As it was, the Royal Marines and paratroopers had managed to establish themselves well ashore and now prepared for their offensive eastwards, with Stanley and the liberation of the Falklands well and truly in their sights.